The following thoughts, opinions, stories, and expressions are meant for those who will appreciate them. If you don't, we hope you keep an open soul to encounter another here on 34 Questions. Peace. Three, two, one. What's going on, folks? Welcome to 34 Questions. I'm your host, 34. And tonight, I have a very special guest. Devin Moreno is in the building. How you Hello. doing, Devin? <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Thank you for the, the warm introduction. And uh, I'm super stoked. I'm, I'm really super stoked to be uh, having this opportunity to, to get to sit down and chat with you. I, I think the, the what you sent and what you kind of like have working for this podcast, that's smooth I, I like it i like it i appreciate it man um yeah once again i just appreciate your time and you know just willingness to share your story on, on this platform i know it's not easy for everyone uh but and like you said before it maybe it wasn't time in the past but you found the time to feel right now so i appreciate it man of course and and whatever uh way this goes i'm i'm an open book so i i've i've plenty of stories and and, and uh, different things that we can talk about so I, i'm 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 just i was excited man gotcha and for the folks out there who don't know me and devin haven't really had a conversation like this in almost 10 years if not if not 10 years <laughs> but, uh, yeah from the college days and i totally forgot that you were younger than me <laughs> <laughs> well so <laughs> you always gave that sage advice so i always knew you had to be a little bit older <laughs> hilarious hilarious yeah. um but yeah good times uh for everyone out there who is unfamiliar with the flow of the show we start off with a few warm-up questions um and then after that we'll jump into a couple icebreakers which is like a true or false in your opinion and like a word association if we have time um and then after that we'll get into the wheel of fate where we'll spin the wheel and whichever number it lands on it'll, that that's going to guide our conversation Ooh, and at the very end after all that we're going to just jump into a final stretch with some closeout questions sound good to you Devin? sounds great let's go all right man well my very first question for you is how have you been it's been 10 10 years um you've been doing well you've been doing great how you been man man up and down all around town I, I mean from different career paths to uh meeting different people to moving to different places and cities um it's been and in just relationships too um it, it's been it's been of course nothing short of a roller coaster but then again that's life for you right there's there's no way to kind of like navigate it the way you want it to go and just when you think things are starting to go a certain way you know here comes life going now nah, let's throw you this curveball let's see what we have let's see what you can do with this and to be where i am now at this point uh, is i'm blessed man i'm blessed and 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 for everything that i've uh for every win that i've grabbed onto for every loss that i've grabbed onto um i'm happy to to be the man that i am today at 30 years old because like i said we haven't talked in 10 plus years so back when i was 19 if i were to tell you that same if you would ask me the same question how i've been I would, then i would say i'm crazy <laughs> <laughs> i got anyway. you and um it, your your screen glitched for a second so we didn't get that, that final part <sighs> i don't know if you yeah. remember what you t said just real quick but um, yeah no i was saying that if if we were to talk about how i'm doing at 19 years of age i would have been all over the place i would have been you know mm, yeah, and yeah. I, I probably would have been so like sure of myself too i would have been like oh yeah i'm gonna do this 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 nah nah i don't know what i was talking about i, I will say you know we just we ran in like a, a similar circle right um mm -hmm. and that i don't think i really got to know you that well you know like yeah. back then i mean it wasn't like you know we were kicking it all the time but we would see each other at uh you know mutual friends gatherings and everything right mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah this is a like for me this is such a you know it's a crazy moment for me to to have get to know someone after i've known like just knew of you 10, 10 years ago you feel me um but yeah, yeah. so it's, it's, it's no, tricky i'm for excited me. for that man <laughs> I, I, it is it is a little bit like we're like oh you were always there and like we would talk about like you know things here and there but casual small like, talk yeah 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 
But uh, um, I'm not. I'll be honest with you. I'm not surprised that you're you're doing a podcast now. Where you're where you're uh, you know going deep and talking to a lot of questions, or, or you know, because you always were. You always did come off that way too. I was like, this guy, he he, he has those digging questions. I like it. <laughs> well, yeah, I was gonna ask you. Did, did it ever come like? It, it took me a while to realize I was that person at the party. <laughs> And yeah. uh, and uh, did it ever come off as too strong, or like, like, do you ever feel like there was a, a time where it was like, oh shit, this guy's asking me some deep ass questions, and like, I don't even know him. <laughs> so the funny thing is that if you were to talk to my group of friends that I hang out with, I'm that guy. So yeah, <laughs> I, I think that's why we vibes. You know, that's why like, yeah. you know, we were chilling uh, for sure. Yeah. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Yeah. <laughs> So it was never any bothering me. I mean, I, I can't speak for everybody, you know, but I always enjoyed it. I was like, oh, wow, this is what that feels like. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. um, but for sure, Matt, I definitely relate to what you were saying about, you know, just going through going through life. Um, mm -hmm. What's it called? You talked about having different careers. And I'm mm -hmm. wondering if it, like where you're at at my level, because I've had a ton of different careers. <laughs> um, oh, man. 17 jobs in 10 years like yeah <laughs> okay okay you got but, the cake <laughs> you got the cake for me <laughs> yeah. but let, let me hear more man like well, what kind of path did you take uh, for yourself so coming out the gate like uh when i first uh when you had met me i was actually working alongside my father and he, he has the family business was uh working in the uh in like a warehouse setting and we would be working on like forklifts, the actual forklifts themselves. And, you know, for me, I, it was kind of always assumed that I was going to just follow in his footsteps, you know, and, you know, he did it. So you're going to do it and your grandson's going to do it. And, you know, it was going to be this long line of that. And for me, I never wanted to just kind of fall into the same routine and, and, and that same path. I didn't want that for myself, yeah. you know? Yeah. And uh, my dad was a pretty hard-nosed man and he the way he would uh do things was you know this was the way and he'd almost like kind of call you the entire way um and i think i felt like i'm never gonna earn this man's respect he's always gonna look at me as like a as a kid if i don't forge my own path so when i finally kind of mustered up the the courage and i was like you know i'm not gonna be doing this anymore i didn't really know where to go what path to go down but i did want to do something where i was like helping the community and at the time it was either i'm going to be a firefighter or i'm going to be a police officer and <laughs> straight up the police officer uh pamphlet was a little bit shorter than the firefighter <laughs> so i was like boom that's mine <laughs> i got gotcha. you i got gotcha. you yeah so i went on that path and i went to the whole police academy uh went through uh training and what i found out really quickly about the job was um much respect to the men and women in blue you know, I have friends that are, that still do, uh, are still in law enforcement. And I will be the first one to say that job is not for everybody. And if your head's not completely in that game, um, you know, it's for your own safety and for everybody else's safety. It's good that you step away from it. You know, I got um, you. I got you. Yeah. And so I did learn a lot. I did learn a lot. And I grew up really quick in, in that uh, profession. Um, but I will say that when I stepped away from that, I wasn't sure you know, what, am, what am I going to be doing after this? You know, that was supposed to be that career all uh, end all for mm -hmm. myself. So, you know, I started trying to do smaller things like security um, for, for different things like private gigs. And then for uh, even just uh, just regular working for like a regular security company. Um, and then I thought, oh, you know what? Well, maybe I can continue being a rock star because I was still a person that was heavily involved in music, you know? Word, um, word. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, there'd be times when we all be hanging out and I'd be the guy with the guitar. Like I do jamming. remember. I do remember that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Okay, so what, what what was that like? Well, um it was uh it, it was it was tough, man. You you it was at first it was easy just to play a lot of like cover material and play that that type of stuff, but when I realized that you know it's it's much harder to be a rock star these days you know that uh, i was like you know what this is uh, this isn't for me i need to get a real job i need to do something mm -hmm. you know 
more productive and something that generated money at the time because I needed money at the time. And um, from there, I, I ended up by by chance, I ended up um, kind of working in the log logistics for like shipping and handling and all that stuff or stuff that would leave the country. It would just be import and export um, mainly. And I kind of fell on that for a long time. Now, the entire time during this this period, this 10 year period, I had been still doing jujitsu like throughout those years. I got you. The one thing that kept me sane. It was the one thing that was like, you gotta have hobbies, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, and uh, that was something I was always doing. And during the, that whole uh, process, I was getting opportunities uh, by my jiu-jitsu instructor, like, hey, you should, you, you kind of have a gift here to like teach. You should try coaching, you know, just tr try your hands at it a couple times. And I did, I started taking some classes here and there. Um, and eventually now it, the way it is now, like I, I plan to do something in, where it's full time, where I'm a full time coach. So Damn. it's kind of. All yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. That's sick, man. Yeah. I, I I could totally see that for you. Um, yeah. That's, I mean, would you ever have thought you were going to end up going down this path? Like as you were going through it? <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's interesting because I always knew that this martial arts in general that's something that i've always been fascinated and something that i've always done since i was like 15 and it was just something like i just want to know how to defend myself i just want to know kind of like how to fight I just that's kind of all it was for the longest time um and there were like things here and there like my mom would my mom used to tell me when i was little she's like oh you're really good at like showing people how to do something you know you should think about being like a teacher but it, it just never i never found a subject that clicked you know yeah yeah <laughs> it turns out my hobby you know yeah yeah that's sick man like um after so many years of doing it right like you just don't realize that damn i'm actually pretty good and i can have i'm willing <laughs> and i have the skill to teach and it, it just comes up right i i feel you on that um mm -hmm. Before this podcast, I never, I didn't like video calls. I didn't FaceTime. I didn't do any of that. Um, and then I think with uh, like doing the podcast, I got so much better at Zoom meetings and stuff, like the comfortability yeah. and all that stuff. But I didn't even think about it. But all of a sudden I realized like I'm pretty comfortable in those meetings when everybody else is like very, you know, just trying, trying to be stiff and stuff. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's it, something we picked up on through like a, a pandemic when everything had to be like kind of like video calls and stuff. Or I mean, on your uh, even then, like I, I actually when I was working in my job, we we were in person. I was uh, like in the pandemic, right? So mm -hmm. out of all my jobs, the last three <laughs> have been um, <laughs> during the pandemic. I was what I was working as a self driving in the self-driving company and like okay. um you know being one of those drivers that was doing safety maintenance making sure it didn't mm -hmm. crash as it was doing its thing um mm -hmm. so yeah we were always there in person um and then the next job i had after that was uh i worked for this one school that like helped kids who really need extra help you know mm -hmm. um yeah. and uh yeah that was a trip i did that for like three four months mm -hmm. until um i got this call or from a previous job that I had, but it was working out of high school. That's that's like um, as an after school coordinator, like basically after school program coordinator. Um, nice. And yeah, so I signed back on after leaving that job like four years ago. I was like, it's my opportunity to get back just because I had, I think because of Corona to be real with you, just because, you know, everybody was going through that self-reflection super hard during that time. 100%. And yeah and i was i was one of those people what i realized was that you know things that i want to do in my life is to like do stuff for other people like even yeah not in a way that like you know they own me but in a way that like i can provide something that i want to provide like fun and events and clubs and then also a way a platform where we can have deep conversation uh so all those elements kind of like balance me out now you know that's where i'm pretty much at in life if you're gonna ask me how i was doing uh yeah i'm just i'm, I'm trying to key into that balance um yes. and i i think you're gonna find that for yourself too now that you have something similar where you're you're giving back and you're teaching you're you're, you're empowering people and that that's what i think yeah. is dope so i agree with that man and you know there's there's parts of it that was i think i used to fight it for a long time 
I used to fight. I don't know if you've ever felt like this before, but almost when you're told like, oh, you're good at this, or this is a path that you could take because you're natural here. There's, there's almost like that rebellious side of me that says like, well, just because you say so doesn't mean I want to do that. Maybe I want to go, you know, be an astronaut. Maybe I want to go, you know, work on cars for, for my, for my life. You know, I, I kind of, Sometimes go like I'm gonna fight whatever it is you're suggesting because <laughs> when, you're, when you're young, you just think everybody's against you, and you're just like, man, you're just saying this to do whatever. Yeah. And then you're agenda, like, oh. you got an agenda, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hear it. No, no, I got you. Uh, as far as that feeling goes, it's funny because I think it's similar to the feeling that I get when people tell me I can't do it um, mm -hmm. or like it's impossible. And I'm like, oh well, I'm gonna show you that. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> I get, I get real about them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's interesting though. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, man. I, man, it's already been about 15 minutes. We have, we've gotten through one question. So, Dang, all right. I, you know what that is? That's a, that's a, that's good communication between us already. We vibing, man. We vibing. I like and, it don't even trip about time all right like i want you if you feel like you got to rant on something go go ahead and rant on it all right uh no. you're giving me the green light bro I'm green light <laughs> green light uh right. second question for you is what would you like the audience to know about you i am the biggest hype man you will come across all right like if if you ever feeling down and and even if you don't know me and you just give me a little bit like a snippet of, of something that you want to feel good about it, I'm your guy. I, I've always just been, like you said, that person type of person that wants to empower people, right? Whether it's through jujitsu or, or um, you know, just any of that their hobbies that they're passionate about. I I want to empower those people. I want them to know, like, if they, they think that um, they're, they're insecure or they're unsure about something, that... I can always be that person that can that can you can stand next to and i'll see to it that you make their, your dreams a reality or you make whatever maybe it's just I, I got to prepare for a podcast i need to prepare for a podcast to be able to talk even if i maybe don't know too much about it i'll do my best to make you feel like you can do anything you know that's Damn. something that that's something that i want people to know about me you know everybody needs someone like you in their corner man or at least in their circle um right. i, I would like hope <laughs> yeah I, I would hope that everyone wants to be like that right um yeah. which honestly i'm not going to say that people aren't that way um i think it's it's goals for sure to be someone like that um but yeah man for sure and that now yeah. we know now we know yeah uh what, what would you say is the biggest misconception about you though like all every time like yeah you have to correct them like oh nah what like how could you think that <laughs> oh man and i don't know if this is just because uh, of how i i walk around and I, i've been told like i try to it's something i try to work on but i've been told over and over again that i don't look like the nicest guy in the world you know <laughs> you, you know you would never guess but like if, if you start talking to me because i'll light up and i'll be like oh you want to talk to me but for the most part i'm just kind of like <laughs> <laughs> you know like i got oh. you <laughs> like oh, get away from this guy <laughs> you know but yeah I, yeah i'm a nice guy if, if you if uh, you bother to talk to me <laughs> has anyone ever like told you to smile more i've had that happen to me one time and you know i, I thought i'm a pretty like happy person but <laughs> yeah. one, one time someone's like what's what's wrong with your face man and i'm like what do you mean he's like you put a smile on like i'm like damn was i look like just looking hella mean or something i don't know uh but yeah it was, it was a trip <laughs> my wife tells me that every day <laughs> really <laughs> put a smile on <laughs> like what's, what's going on what, what's the matter with you i'm like oh oh i'm fine no no we're good we're good I'm, there's like a monkey in my head doing the symbols right now you know we're good <laughs> i feel it man um yeah all right here we go number three and this was important um if i were to do something in your honor a way to express the energy you possess what could i do okay so i did this is this is one that i really liked um and if there was something that i could stress or like uh try to um, convey to you uh, to do as a representation of me it would be to try all the small things and I, I, like 
small projects or, or, or endeavors that maybe they don't need to be so dramatic like oh i need to go travel the world or i'm going to start this uh business they don't need to be necessarily like those those giant goal oriented ones but maybe i want to try this new restaurant maybe i want to go to the movies by myself maybe there's um this uh show that i want to go see and maybe there's a person i want to go talk to you know the smaller things i think are often overlooked because when you're not afraid to try those smaller things and those ideas that maybe pop in your head every now and then um you don't realize that i think in my opinion those are the things that kind of like help mold you to eventually do those bigger things so if there's ever like a thought in your head where you wanted to try something um I would strongly urge that like, even if it's, maybe it's silly, maybe if you think it's like a, a waste of time, it's not a waste of time if it's gonna build your character, you know? Mm. Don't be afraid to do it. That's what I would, uh, that's something that I would want uh, to to convey to you. I got you, I got you. I think that's something that uh, like now, now, now that we know, you're pretty much, you know, leaving some, some people with an opportunity to start something new, which is, mm pretty sick <laughs> yeah i agree uh, we, we got you we got you uh how would you like to be remembered huh. well as handsome as you see me on the camera right now, i got you <laughs> you're, you're immortalized in video right I'm now so <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. i'll jerk aside um how i want to be remembered um just as kind of like almost in a way circling uh back to one of the earlier questions was that like that i was always there to like um you know help everybody in their time of need uplift them in some way shape or form you know that if there was ever that person that they needed to call on regardless if it was just an ear to listen to or i needed to like help you out on the freeway because your tire blew out you know or you needed help moving to get your you know, you need to get away from your crazy baby mama, who, whatever it was, whatever the case may be, uh, you knew you could call on me and I was always there at the drop of a hat. I got you. I got you. Um, for my last question for you in the warm up is on a scale from one to 10, how well do you know yourself? A solid three, a solid three. Wow. I, th yeah. if I could be I could be wrong, but that might be the lowest score anyone's <laughs> given themselves. Well, uh, yeah, go ahead. Explain why. Why here, three? Yeah, here's why. Okay. And I say three and I'm based off of the fact that I'm still, I just turned 30 and I still think that I'm, I'm pretty young. And even though I've been through like a lot of different like experiences, I still feel like there's more experiences to go out and, and, and see and feel. And I'm a firm believer as you don't really know who you are until you're put into certain situations. You know, you, you know, at, in, a, in a very chaotic situation, maybe you cower, maybe in a very chaotic situation, you're ready to fight back. You know, we don't know all of those situations until we're put in them. And because there's so many different things that could happen in this life, I think that I'm still relatively a baby. Maybe by the time I'm I'm I'm, I'm older, maybe in my 60s, 70s, who knows? Maybe I'll I'll have a different answer for you then. But um, until that time, I'd like to think that I know my I know myself pretty well from those experiences because there's so many different things that I haven't felt and and, and experienced yet. I'm 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 a work in progress. I'd like to think I'm still a work in progress are we all man we are definitely yeah. there um yeah. but no i got you i got you i for me the way i kind of always explained it to people is that at my lowest points um that's when i don't know myself at all and when i'm at my highest points that's when i feel like i really know who i am uh, yeah. so really like you said it depends um the ebbs and flows of life uh but yeah you you had said something but it, the thought um uh, flew out of my head so my bad no, um, you're good you're good but my last follow-up for you is what would you say is your favorite thing about your personality definitely my enthusiasm definitely my enthusiasm like um i know sometimes it can be a little much for people like i know there's times where if it's you know 
7 a.m. in the morning and everybody's still trying to wake up and I'm going like, let's go. We have a full day ahead of us. I'm like that, you know, that dad that you see on the TV screen, like, yo, shut up. Go, like, go back and lay down. <laughs> like, I know that can be a little bit much, but, you know, I sometimes I don't know how else to be, you know, uh, that's, that's, that's just who I am as a person. I have to, I, I'll tone it down, you know, I'll chill out a little bit, but I, I do love that about myself. I do love the enthusiasm they bring uh, to my friends, family, and pretty much work environment, you name it, that's me. Is that like a, what would you say the influence of that is? Nature versus nurture. Was it something from your family? Like are, are your folks like that as well? Or is it more nurture where it kind of like where, how you grew up kind of rated you that way? You know, I would, it's funny that you say that because, you know, I, I'd like to think there's parts of me that's like a rebel at heart and you know, um, my dad is a pretty enthusiastic guy. So there are <laughs> things that I from him for sure. You know, I got you. Um, and uh, there's also like, a, I, I kind of shaped it into my own to be way more positive than anything. You know, it's a positive enthusiasm because you can be enthusiastic and be negative. But, you know, I didn't want to carry on that if i'm going to be enthusiastic i want to feel happy i want i want people to be happy about it not i'm a debbie downer or anything like that i know i know exactly what you mean man like people ask me why why am i so positive or whatever um like i feel like in that balance of the world i'd rather be the person who was given out positive energy than you know like using negative energy um so that that's at least and it sounds similar for you it's like if yeah. i'm going to it put myself out there why would i you know do something like put out that negative side um mm -hmm. but yeah man I, I totally feel you so i guess we're warriors on the same side <laughs> is what yeah, i'm saying yeah, we're, 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 uh, infectious in that way i, yeah. I can think that <laughs> uh, all right man well we made it to the icebreakers nice. and uh this first one is a oh wait before that if you are listening and are enjoying the content <laughs> Please like, subscribe, and share. Um, I just have to say it until I don't have to say it any longer. So <laughs> we'll leave it that way. Um, all right. First icebreaker is right. a true or false, agree or disagree type thing. And the first statement is people are ultimately good. Well, I'm mixed with this one. But... It may come off controversial giving all my enthusiasm and everything but <laughs> it's all good it's all good <laughs> i'm gonna say false people are not ultimately false. good okay yeah uh, uh tell me more tell me why so there's a philosopher from back from the mid 1500s early 1600s named thomas hobbs and specifically he basically outlined that if man is left without like his consciousness or rather i should say when he's left at just his devices where he just has to worry about himself, he was only going to worry about himself. You know, I think that people can learn through morals, through upbringings, through, you know, positive reinforcement and, and being given a path to to strive for can can bring good out of them. But I think in their natural state, if, if, if left, you know, without those things, I think that quite controversial you know man will kill his uh his brother to own his land you know so i think that there's things that uh there's things that really need to be set in place as you grow that's why i'm really i'm a really big believer on uh, uh child developmental psychology and what's mm -hmm. what's taught at a, at a young age um, because you can ultimately shape um, a good person or a really bad person yeah interesting yeah. At, at a young age like how, how what's the what were the sweet spot for for that like four or five um, i think right away the, the minute that the right away like right there's a there's a reality of like innocence right and i do believe that that's where the mind is 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 most moldable but i think by by the time a kid is around maybe between eight to ten years old eight years of age that's when you can kind of see okay, this is going to be, we're, we're, we're on the right path. This is the good, this is the good. Not to, not to say that somebody can't change. I do believe that everybody has the ability to change over and over in time. But um, I think that it, it really has to come from within 
and it has to be based on something that they're seeing something that that person is seeing that they want to see something better for them themselves they want to see something better for their family you know it has to come from from a, a reason there has to be a reason i feel you i feel you uh yeah and honestly this 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 used to be a way i thought you know mm-hmm. uh, people are, are ultimately good I don't really believe in good and evil anymore. I think yeah. it's it's really like, you know, you are who you are. You're going to have good moments. You're going to have bad moments. Um, and yeah, so, but like, I would like to think because you said ultimately people will do what's best for them, uh, that I think everyone should accept that as some, that what, something that everybody does and we can't mm-hmm. hold it against each other. Right? Like mm-hmm. if it sucks, if someone steals from me, but I have to understand that if maybe I was in their situation, I would have done something like that. You know, like it, mm-hmm. it really sucks to accept that, but <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's true. <laughs> it's true that, um, you know, we're all going through our own shit. That, and that's kind of like how I always kind of framed it in my mind. It's like, we're, we're all going through our own shit. I really can't, you know, assume anything about anybody. I mean, there are lines that can be crossed, but mm-hmm. for the most part, I try to give people the most, uh, you know, benefit of the doubt. Um, yeah but yeah well, and the way you put it like that like there are certain situations that can either bring a, a something that an action that maybe like you said how would we be in those situations you know what would we be doing in those situations could we sit here and say sit here on a pedestal and say like oh i wouldn't do that because you know i'm above that you know that's the wrong way to think um you know i've been in pretty low situations where you know i was living in my car you know and what i have who knows what i've done at, at those at those points mm-hmm. but i think it's important to remember that um you know we always try to strive to do whatever again that we were taught was was the right way you know and I, that's why i'm a big firm believer on on having positive mentors in your life people that can guide you on the, those those right paths because um, if you don't then you know who, who knows what could, what could happen who knows how you can end up yeah yeah i mean and that's like we could talk about how people are shaped like for days because you know there's so many factors um that we could just li- like list out yeah. maybe we'll do it one day maybe we'll do it one day yeah. uh, that's, a, that's a full uh, hour <laughs> discussion right there because <laughs> i was going to ask you how do, like what, what what were your factors what do you think were the biggest uh, but we'll save that for it for another yeah. for another time yeah. um my second statement for you is happiness is the most important thing false false what is what is the most important thing for you balance yeah balance. Ooh, i wish i had like a, a clap a, a clap sound effect right now but <laughs> dinner bells are ringing boom. i hear you man so t- tell me in your words why balance is important i think with every for every good thing that you experience there's there's a there's a negative so there's a there's a there's a bad thing that can happen right there's a yin and a yang to everything right i think in order to even experience what what we call like true happiness um and the best the best way i could actually relate to this uh and explain what i do is in is in jujitsu right in jujitsu you have a lot of days where you know you are you're what we call the nail right and you're getting tapped you're you're trying to like try so hard to do the techniques that you're learning in that small uh 45 minute period and where i think we froze we did freeze so yeah rewind a little bit and then keep going <laughs> okay so for example in like jujitsu there's a lot of days where you're not going to be able to do any of the moves that you're learning and it's sometimes it takes years and years to even get to that that stage where you can master those things and if we get to that point where we're able to achieve that move, we're able to pull that off, you feel like it's a state of euphoria almost. You're, you're just like ecstatic because you knew what it took. You knew all the, the strain and all the struggle you had to go through in order to get to that state. And that's when you feel that those moments are happy versus if you were able just to just do it just straight up from the jump and it wasn't difficult at all, it, it, it doesn't it's not the same it doesn't you know? hit, hit the same it doesn't hit the same exactly yeah. you got you, you know gotta what? you gotta struggle you gotta feel the challenge um yeah 
I mean, that's that's what I say now. But if you see me win the lottery, then I'd be like, <laughs> that's a challenge. <laughs> He's like, oh, right. But you know what? And sometimes I think even even the people that are there, like there's there's different balances and everything. You know, you could have all the money in the world, right? But sometimes I think those guys, like, I wonder how many of those guys actually like really look at their friends and go like, all right, are you are you really my friend? Or what point did you come into my life? You know. And, and there's there's that struggle there. There's always this 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 struggle for balance in, in your mind in what you're doing. Um, and and if you don't have that balance, and if you're not sure of that balance, I think um, you you feel well, you feel imbalanced. You know, plain and simple. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, man. I think it's interesting that you're you know you're in your thirties uh, now, and I think balance for me has been a big focus of my thirties, and you know. It's actually my birthday today, bro. Like, I, I didn't want to say it too much, but yeah, you, 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 you're joining birthday, me. My dude. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to say it, but since we're talking about age, yeah, I'm 32 yeah. today. Uh, wow. And uh, yeah, as far as like balance being a priority, that's what it has been. And I think that's an exciting thing for a lot of people, like for people who haven't had that thinking yet. But damn, like I'm working with these high school students and I tell them all the time it's about balance. Um, but, you know, it's that's hard to kind of understand at, as a high schooler. Like, the fuck? Like, <laughs> stop, like stop, about, this crazy hippie dude. <laughs> like, tell me about balance. <laughs> Who let him in the school, man? <laughs> but yeah, oh, you man. know, uh I'm trying to tell, let them know you got to identify what's important to you, which is crazy to think that like for you, Jiu Jitsu has opened these doors for you. And for me, like I've always wanted to like, I think, I don't know if you knew this in college, but my first dream was to be a rapper. And I was talking about, you know, being a rapper back then and uh, like just being in front of a mic and because like, other than this and, you know, being that person at parties to ask other questions, I'm a pretty quiet person. Uh, mm -hmm. so but something about like you know f recording it and like you know just saving it and being able to share it later on makes me feel more heard you know yeah. uh, and that's a trippy thing for me but yeah that's all I want to mention about balance no, man, again, like you know what kudos to you man like on your birthday man 34 this is this is this is the way to be man this is I, I'm, I'm speechless and, and, and thank you for taking time out of your, your day man to like even have me here in front of you you know honestly man i could have been a, la a lazy fuck again but uh i was definitely like thinking to myself like well, what i want to be doing on my birthday you know yeah. it'd be sick as fuck if i could just spend all day today in the park interviewing people that'd been hella dope mm -hmm. but you know and it, was, it just so happened that you scheduled it on my birthday i'm like perfect i didn't have to like find someone to you know fill in just to to feel that way but yeah man yeah. this is uh you gave me the ability to do exactly what i want to be doing like one of the one of the fine. things i want to do today uh but yeah i can't do it all but you got me there so i appreciate it no of course again that's i, I agree everything it's all balance it really is all about balance you know yeah um so that being said <laughs> got to push forward we're gonna skip this uh other icebreaker and jump straight into the wheel of fate um because right. i do want to spin it and see what you get and do, do the damn thing so you see the little wheel it's gonna I look do. better in the final product <laughs> i know it looks smoky <laughs> on your end right now but it's gonna look better i swear uh here we go all right and i don't think you'll have this problem but if there's any question that's too deep or too personal feel free to pass all right of course let's see all right 21 what are you too stubborn to let go of Ooh, oh that's a good one what am i too stubborn to let go of <sighs> maybe i think that there's there's the things that it's, it's hard for me to let go of sometimes is uh looking past um Think, like there's things that I've learned from my father and there's things that I've learned from my grandfather and the people that know me really well know that those two are um, legitimately like the yin and the yang of my life you know uh, my, my grandfather he's he's he passed away about 10 years ago now but he was somebody that was 
almost like that that second fatherly figure to me and he represented a lot of positive energy towards me mm-hmm. you know versus my dad um being the opposite of that he did she he did show me um a lot of uh, ways how to be and and how to kind of navigate through this life and what to expect but between the nurturing kinds of, of both of them my grandpa was the one that was more nurturing you know and there are times where you know even now to this day i think he my father does try to cross that bridge as he's gotten older and there's times where i find myself maybe i'm stuck maybe because i'm so set in my way sometimes i, I see my father and I'm, i'm back to being like a, a 10 year old boy again and it's hard for me to sometimes remember that you know what is done is done and look past those things and, and realize what the person is trying to do now you know and you know easier said than done i could sit here all day and say like yeah i know that's what it is um and try to move on from it but when you're there and you and you're trying to navigate it right in front of you it's a lot more difficult you know so i think maybe that stubbornness is 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 letting that go letting the past be the past you know? yeah man 100% i think that's mm-hmm. like there's definitely stuff in my past that it's been like such a struggle to let go of um i don't think in terms of you know relationships with parents mm-hmm. um it's 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 interesting cuz like i'd be thinking that you know my my dad didn't have a dad like i never got mm-hmm. to meet my grandfather on that set, on that side he, he passed away when my dad was 2 um so like my dad always tried to be the best dad he could be um but it was always through role models that i think were kind of unrealistic you know cuz mm-hmm. maybe he was looking up to somebody on tv maybe he was looking up to somebody in a movie and being like that's what a man's supposed to be that's what a father's supposed to be like and um you know like i don't hold anything against them um but there's always things that i think for me i just try to accept that he he did the best he can with what he had um mm-hmm. and uh you know that's that's where I'm pretty much i'm at with uh with that part I just wanted to give my two cents so you didn't no, feel so vulnerable <laughs> you, you said that cuz yeah. uh, my dad the same way he didn't know uh, who his father was either and i think there was a lot of things that he drawed on to like Schwarzenegger you know all the the manly mans you saw in the the movies like that's what a man is you need to behave like that <laughs> i mean i i don't want to assume but like were your parents immigrants that moved here to the the states or yeah no no, no. no they were actually um i think i'm seventh generation uh Mexican. What? Yeah, so they've been here for a while. That's what's up. That's what's up. I mean, yeah. for me I always thought like even just that like for my folks coming here of uh, first generation, they uh um you know, basically had an idea of what America was like and like, you know, what it meant to be an American family and and all those ideas. So no, nah, but yeah. I I feel it though. I feel it. I mean, you're you're as you guys are ingrained in that American culture. <laughs> but we are. Yeah. It's like, well, I don't know Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I mean don't worry. I don't know Tagalog either like that. I understand it, but uh you know, it sucks, man. I, I don't know this like I know half of the secret code. You know like Dude, That's what oh it feels like. <laughs> oh, you and me both, man. You yeah. and me both. Uh all right. So let me give it another spin for you. All right. We got Looks like that was 30. Double check. Oh, yeah, 30. Yeah, 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 30. Here we go. Um what can earn your trust? Like how do you like, you know, you're meeting people and there's that point where you're like I think I can trust this person. You know, where where's that line for you? Oh, I think and this is a tough one like i don't mean to put this much pressure on people when i meet them <laughs> <laughs> yeah i got you i got you well we're, we're always told don't trust anyone right so like yeah 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 so go ahead i think the more the minute that they can realize that like there's there's nothing they like there's as trans if you can just be transparent from the get go if you can show like that there's no secrets and realize that you know and I'll be the first one I'll throw my my head you know on the axe first and, and you know let them know how open I am and I'll I'll reveal to them like hey look this is how I am by no means do you need to um 
you know, reveal anything to me right away. I and mean, that's not what I'm saying, but you know, over time, the more and more that I see you be transparent with me is the moment that I start to go, oh, okay, there's, there's no secrets with this person or there's no, uh, there's no hidden agenda. You know, there's nothing that I need to worry about. You have my trust. If you, what do you show that what I'm able to do, um, with you in a conversation, that's when I usually know again, not no pressure to anybody, you know, <laughs> You don't have to do that right away, but that's when I'll know. That's when you earn my trust. I got you. <laughs> Conundrum. <laughs> you just let your secret be known, and not everyone's gonna. <laughs> yeah. All the new people meeting you are, are gonna know now. Um, you talked about <laughs> you talked about hidden agendas, uh, and you know I've been thinking about it. Like I, I know there's people that do have them. Uh, I don't think mm. everybody has them, though. You know, yeah. like some people just have walls up and you know that's that's who they are uh for whatever reason um i know for me i have my walls up until i think i'm trying to think what 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 helps me like you know start when when i can when i feel comfortable enough to ask a question especially at this point when i was younger in college i probably didn't care but then when i realized that's who i was Mm -hmm. and i'm like not you got to read the room you got to make sure (laughs) who you asking (laughs) the questions to I heard that uh, one before we leave the room, bro. <laughs> and I'm just like, my bad, man. I'm like very like I want us to talk some about something real right now. Like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, real. I get you. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I I, I feel I feel you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um gonna give a... I think we got time for, for one more spin. Nice. And uh let's do that. I'm excited for this next part though. So like for, for you specifically, but nice. Number 19. Hey, when uh, I met you. <laughs> wow. Ooh. Wow. Mind blown. Um, okay, and this is, uh, I think it's going to be a good one for you. What is your controversial opinion? The one that people seem to like always, you know, take a take a battle stance with you on, you know? <laughs> oh, I, you know, it's funny. Uh, it's, it was actually on this, it was on this questionnaire. It was on the one that the question was, do you think that people are ultimately good? So right when I usually tell people, nah, I don't think people are, are naturally good. They, they kind of like take us back step and they're like, you of all people, you know, you seem like super friendly when we start to talk to you. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, I don't, that, that's my, that's my opinion. You know, I don't think that people are, are naturally uh, good on their own. If you leave them alone to do whatever they want, they're going to do whatever they want, you know? And I had to sit there and explain to that. Usually it's an argument and, uh, you know, I try to walk away from that as much as I can. So that's so interesting. And cause like, I don't think I've gotten into too, too many arguments about that statement, but I am curious, like exactly what people think. And, um, yeah, I mean, as far as being good, I think a lot of people try, like there's a lot more yeah. people trying to be good. Um, which is important, but the ones that do bad are are really good. At, are really good at being bad. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> more more than the people doing good. Like we suck at being good. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know you gotta watch the, t- the ones that like are trying to be a little too good. Those are the ones I look at. I'm like, oh, what, what are you doing over there? You know, I gotta I gotta keep I gotta sleep with one eye open with you. You know. Well, you, know. you, you let me know if I ever cross that threshold because I've, I've been thinking that's how I come off sometimes. Um, nah, but yeah, you'd be nah. like, oh, that's suspicious of you for doing too, you're, you're doing too much good. Because <laughs> yeah, when I used to, when I was a when I was a cop, and there was always that one person that wanted to reveal a little bit more, like they're trying to help you out. Here you go, sir. Here you go, officer. And you start looking at them like, who are you exactly? I you got know? you. I got you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You definitely had that experience. Um, yeah. All right, man. So just a heads up, there's about 10 minutes left in the podcast. I want to thank you again for for stopping by, man. Of course. All right. So this next part, before we jump into the closeout questions, um, is called the 34th Mantra. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's probably, you know, if you didn't come into this nervous, so I don't think it'll make you nervous. But for most folks, I think it's one of those moments that like, you know, really gets anxiety up because... I'm about to switch you onto the screen where you'll be talking to yourself. Um, right. And I want you to fulfill the phrase, I am blank, I can blank, I will blank. I am, I can, I will. 
uh, it's just a message for yourself uh, so let me do that take a second to think about it here you are and whenever you're ready all right all right all right hey there good looking how you doing all right so the 34th mantra um yeah that, that goes deep man um i'm proud of you i'm proud of you kid no matter what this you know whatever the how much life we have left um you need to walk away knowing that uh that that you did it all right you, you you're all right you ended up being okay so i'm proud of you um i can do anything that i really set my mind to you know as cliche as that sounds as cliche cliche as that may be um whether it's trying to do open mic again at the ice house failing or if it's something that um <clears throat> you're you're just terrified to do just you can do anything that you say your mind to and the last part no matter what i will not put myself down for trying something you know i will not put my down myself down for trying anything that uh, i was scared to do I am. for sure man for sure <laughs> That was probably the best way I've seen anyone utilize that exercise. <laughs> not saying, <laughs> not saying that all my other guests didn't do it right, but I think you really took the time to leave yourself a message. You know, like uh, there's some folks who are they just got that statement, which mm. honestly that's how I've led it. But now I have an example to show everyone, like if you can do it this way. <laughs> <laughs> but uh it's really for you but you know no pressure to anybody else i'm just kidding um, i look at myself a lot of the mirror naked <laughs> <laughs> you are perfect <laughs> it's, it's so hilarious to me because i relate <laughs> <laughs> like i'm not alone <laughs> yeah. there's dozens there's dozens of us right oh <laughs> uh, all well, right well. man <laughs> So I know you kind of mentioned it, I think, but um, one of the closeout questions is shout out question. Um, and the question is, who would you say has been your greatest mentor? Mentor, mentor, man, there's so many, you know? And uh, I think for sure, um, probably my my grandfather and my father like i said like they're they've been the yin and the yang to my to my life you know and even though uh you know i can't speak to my grandfather anymore you know there's so much that he left behind that i i try to represent the best that i can um and uh if if there's anything that i can do that anything remotely like him you know i i really hope that i can convey that um and the same thing with my father you know if i can take the balance of both of those uh those teachings and, and put them together and, and i'm what you get then I'll, I'll be happy with that got you mm -hmm. uh yeah man like just uh, every every time you bring up yin and yang and balance it's uh, it's crazy that you had two figures in your life that kind of exemplified that uh, yeah <laughs> yeah um all right this next question is actually from my previous guest yeah. uh so shout out to Laika. i hope i didn't remember i like i hope i remembered her name correctly but Laika's question for you is i'm sorry like if i'm saying it wrong <laughs> uh when was the last time you were honest with yourself the last time i was honest with myself um yeah i would say i would say uh today this, this morning when i was when i woke up and you know i got i got your uh message and say like hey man making sure you're still on and i was like thinking to myself i'm like nah, i'm not i'm not ready i'm not ready but when i really sat down and went and told myself I'm like no you're good you got this don't be so nervous damn yeah <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> man um yeah. I, I definitely send those to, i try to send that message out to all my guests the day of uh, just to see where they're at because you're right like you know and mm -hmm. i didn't even think think that honestly i was like oh this dude's looking forward to it like am i like i said i could have been a lazy <laughs> fuck today and i was like just waiting but we were both on the same page man so. yeah man you did your due diligence and i and i appreciate that about you man so i, I try man it's not every day <laughs> but you know today it was <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right man um 
Second question is, what would you like to ask the next guest that comes down to 34 questions? Okay, let me see. Um, I'd like to ask them, what was the last idea or thought or activity that you wanted to do, no matter, you know, how big or small it was, um, that you decided to pass on and why? And will you make that same choice again? Okay. Uh, I'm on passed on and why? And would Ooh. you make that decision again? Yeah. All right. Ooh. Mm. Interesting. All right. Mm. All right, man. We'll see. We'll see. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, and like, I don't know who it's going to fall on. Very random. I don't know who my next guest is. Actually, after you, if you have any recommendations of any folks that you think would like this type of thing. Uh, I have a laundry list, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> then please, please do, man. Because honestly, yeah. this is going to start with the people who, who want to do it, who like kind of recognize what's happening. Um, yeah. and, and then after that, I hope... The, the rest of the people can be like oh, okay now we get it uh but yeah, yeah, yeah yeah we'll see we'll see uh, <laughs> and then made it to the last question of the day uh the question that ties everything together 100 years from now 200 years from now your great 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 grandkids are watching this your great 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 you know relatives descendants are watching this what would you like to tell them i would like to tell all of them that wherever they have a painting of me wherever there's like a shrine of me because they know that their ancestor is going to be that badass the one that went and wasn't afraid to do anything that he set his mind to he, and you know i take that back he was terrified to do all those things but he still did them anyway he still went and did them anyway um because he was more afraid of having that life where he didn't do any of those things so i want them to know even if you try even if you uh, fail, walk away knowing that you did the damn thing and you should be happy for that. Feel that. Feel that. Mm -hmm. I think that's definitely an important reminder. Um, that failing, trying is all doing, you know, uh, yeah. you are doing it. That's something that I've, I've always struggled with myself. Like, I think it took me a whole year to really feel like I'm doing a podcast. Like, I didn't have that confidence. I didn't have that experience to say like, "Oh, I'm doing this." It was more like, "Oh, I'm trying it out. See how where it's going." How, uh, but you, you know, it's it's something that I feel really comfortable like doing. Like I just, I, but before besides rapping and I tried to start a clothing brand uh, called Hella Hungry, and then before the podcast. But each of those things, like uh, trying to be a rapper for my ego you know just trying to mm -hmm. make me feel good besides like the self-expression part but definitely but definitely any times I, I really tried it was because you know i was trying to impress somebody and you know mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. so that uh and then the clothing brand i wanted that to be uh, a thing that was about the message but it really got wrapped in up in my identity as far as like every time i introduced myself i always had to say oh uh oh yeah and this is my clothing brand i'm jan ramirez is my clothing brand uh yeah. which over time now i feel good did not feel right like why am i doing that um yeah. but then the podcast it's like i can talk about it and just feel 100 percent sure that it is not like like hit no hidden agenda behind it you know uh yeah. which people might not read that but i know for me it gets me more open to talk about it than it did with the uh clothing brand and rapping so yeah it's crazy that it's the the ego itself man it's, it's the one thing that leads you to want all these achieve all these things it's what builds you up but ultimately yeah your ego will stab you and and leave you out to bleed out you know that's the reality of it but good on yeah. you man you, you're right you that you recognize that now you have an amazing platform you know and i don't know if it like i said i don't got the answers i don't think it's right like what I'm doing is the right thing to do. It's just what, what works for me. And yeah. I think that's what people are looking for is like what works for them. Um, and yeah, so maybe try it. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, man. So want to thank you again. Any last uh, words before we head out of here? 
Um, well, I guess, you know, just for for anybody that's out there, like I said, don't don't be afraid to try, try anything and 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 have good friends, man. Have people that are, are close by there to kind of keep you in check. You know, I, I got to, you know, do that thing where I want to like shout out to my boy, Frank, to my girl, Steph, to my wife, Ashley, the baddest girl on the planet right there, to my jujitsu team, EJ Ontario, EJ Corona, uh, Professor Kim, Professor uh, JP, you know, my family, my brother, my mom, you know, my dad, all those people, you know, I, I really mean this from the bottom of my heart. You guys, you're, you are the, the reason why I get up every day. You are the reason why I, I strive to be a better uh, man every day. And I know I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be anything if, if I didn't have any of you guys in my life. So um, even, even you 34, I see you with those questions. Even you, man, it's, it, it, it's, it's a, it's, you guys are all uh, a blessing in my life. And, uh, I appreciate every one of you. I appreciate the hell out of all of you. That's what's up, man. That was super heartfelt, uh, and I appreciate the juice. And I'm pretty sure all the folks that you mentioned appreciate it as well. Uh, <laughs> now, now that was to you right there. That look was right to you. You know who you, you know who you are. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Well, uh, thank you again for stopping by. And uh, yeah, I was gonna. I gotta do my little rundown. For anyone out there who's listening, I want to thank you guys uh, as well for checking it out, giving your time and space to just encounter another soul. Um, and, you know, I don't know how many people you've ever met out there like Devin, but got to appreciate folk like, folks like these, uh, you know, willing to understand, willing to be open. Um, and yeah, we're not alone if you're out there and you're the same way. Uh, remember to reach out, reach forward. As always, much love, and uh, we'll catch you guys next time on 34 Questions. Peace. Then it fades out from there, man. Uh, that's under